Today I would like to present our work that was um, conducted within the European project ACE Nano and deals with the characterization of exosomes and ribosomes in complex media by electrical asymmetrical flow field flow fractionation coupled to nanoparticle tracking analysis. First of all, I would like to introduce you into the world of FF. Um, I will explain a little bit about nanoparticle tracking analysis and then I will highlight the hyphenation of um, AF4 and NTA with the examples of exosomes and ribosomes and I will finalize with a short conclusion. First of all, what is field flow fractionation or FFF? FFF is a family of illusion-based separation techniques where the separation takes place in a narrow ribbon-like channel where a laminar flow is applied. This laminar flow is, uh, results in a parabolic flow profile and perpendicular to it, we have a separation force. The separation force can be a centrifugal field, a flow field, a thermal gradient, or even a, an electrical field. The separation field um, counteracts with the Brownian motion of the particles and smaller particles, which have a higher diffusion coefficient, will locate closer to the channel center, as can be seen here, and they will experience a higher streaming velocity and therefore they will elude prior to larger ones. In this work, I will present uh, mainly the most common sub-technique of FF. This is asymmetrical flow field flow fractionation, or short AF4. The separation field here is a flow field. As I mentioned before, we have a separation field and we have our smaller particles separated from larger ones based on their differences in diffusion coefficient or on or um, respectively on the hydrodynamic size. A second technique I would like to introduce is um, electrical AF4. This um, here we superimpose to the um, to the um, separation force an electrical field and then we uh, obtain a separation by size and charge. The major advantage of FF is its compatibility with, um, extra, or, um, with several or a great vari variety of detectors. For example, we have multi-angle light scattering, we have dynamic light scattering for sizing of particles, we can uh, use different concentration detectors or even ICPMS to uh, obtain and um, get more element specific information about our analyte. Nanoparticle tracking analysis is, has become um, the, over the last years very popular. Um, here we use a laser to uh, visualize individual particles in suspension. Those particles um, or the scattered light of those particles will and the movement of those particles will be tracked by a highly sensitive camera. And um, we capture for a defined period of time um, a video and this video is analyzed by a software which translates or analyzes this Brownian motion of the particles and um, this Brownian motion can be um, translated into a hydrodynamic size using using the Stokes-Einstein equation. The great advantage of this technique is that we are uh, visualizing or analyzing individual particles. So we obtain a number weighted um, size distribution. The, this technique is uh, applicable for particles between one, 10 and 1000 nanometer, which depends strongly on the optical properties of the particles. Uh, how can we combine now those um, techniques to benefit from the, the, the advantages of both? Um, one, there's always a but. 
so MPA um, has the problem that in highly complex matrices, matrices um, the particles are not cannot be distinguished from from the complex media because the complex media can also scatter light heavily and therefore the software cannot distinguish between particles and this medium. Here is one example I would like to show. This is only a cell culture medium. Um, I will show later an example, um, but you can see that the particles are, or the medium itself is already scattering light heavily. A second um, challenge in NTA is the very poorly dispersed particles. Larger particles scatter light uh, more heavily than smaller ones, so the camera level is optimized um, to obtain an optimum contrast, and so larger particles are uh, overestimated because the smaller particles are, cannot be uh, seen by the camera anymore because the larger particles are scattering the light um, um, several times more. So if we combine both techniques, we can analyze um, complex um, biological samples and analyze particles inside those samples. Because we can, with AF4 prior to NTA, we can separate them the media, the, the, the medium components from the particles of interest. We can also analyze uh, more poorly dispersed samples because every slice we obtain after separation by AF4 is, uh, can be considered monodispersed, so it's more um, desired for NTA analysis. Furthermore, we can obtain a real particle uh, counting detector for AF4. The one major challenge of both techniques is uh, of the combination of both techniques is the large difference in flow rates. Typically in AF4, we have a detector flow rate of 0 0.5 milliliter per minute, whereas uh, NTA deals with very low flow rates um, normally around 15 microliters per minute. We have overcome this uh, problem by using our slot outlet technique. We have re reduced the uh, detector flow rate from 0 0.5 milliliter per minute to 0 0.15 milliliter per minute. After the mouse detector, we are um, going down or further reducing the flow rate to roughly 50 microliters. This work was um, just accepted in, uh, in molecules. Now, the first example I would like to show is um, our exosomes, which were ex uh, purchased and extracted from human urine. The, here you can see the, um, the fractogram. We see our mouse signal and our radius of gyration, which ranges roughly from 23 nanometer to 100 nanometers. The, the exosomes show um, pretty broad size distribution. Furthermore, we obtain our um, NTA results. We get the particle number concentration over time and the hydrodynamic size, which ranges from 25 to roughly one, um, 100 nanometers. To, uh, analyze these exosomes in a more complex um, environment, we spike those exosomes into a um, rabbit serum. And we did not observe a significant change uh, in our radius of generation distribution, which you can see here, uh, compared to the native exosomes. The NTA results also indicate uh, no change in hydrodynamic size, which uh, can be seen on the, in the right diagram. Furthermore, we were able to uh, characterize particles that were present in the matrix itself. And those particles were in the same size range as our exosomes. Therefore, the particle number concentration by, determined by NTA 
um, shows a higher concentration than we would uh, expect because the matrix particles are additional on top to the exosomes we spiked into the medium. As a second example, we used a commercially available um, liposomal formulation. We used our electrical flow FFF to uh, characterize them. Um, we applied different uh, electrical field strength, which induces um, a retention time shift. This retention time shift is proportional to the electrophoretic mobility. We can analyze those retention time shifts and calculate the drift velocity induced by the electrical field strength. And when we plot them over the electrical field strength, we and fit um, a linear regression line into uh, through those data points, we obtain the electrophoretic mobility. Furthermore, we see that the radius of gyration of those liposomes ranges roughly from 25 to 45 nanometers and um, is not um, affected by the electrical field. These uh, liposomes um, were also analyzed in a, in a cell culture medium. Here you can see the diffractogram of the native liposomal um, particles and the particles which were suspended in the cell culture medium. For both, we obtained very high recoveries of um, higher than 87%. The retention times are pretty uh, much the same, are very comparable, and we have again no significant or measurable increase in radius of duration. Furthermore, we also performed a uh, CETA potential or electrophoretic mobility determination uh, with our EAF4, which can be seen here. We see our typical retention time shift for a number of um, repeated measurements, and we can perform our electrical um, FFF plot. Furthermore, we obtain our NTA results. On the left diagram, the liposomes, the native liposome um, particles can be seen. We have a hydrodynamic size from roughly 70 to 90 nanometers. Furthermore, we obtain our particle number concentration and um, the same we obtain for the liposomes in this uh, complex cell culture medium. This cell culture medium was uh, shown before in a traditional NTA measurement, which um, I showed on a previous slide, which scattered light heavily. So we don't have this interferences with the complex medium. Furthermore, we see no significant shift in retention time or in hydrodynamic size, which um, is accordance to each other. To summarize those liposome results, um, we don't see any interferences by the matrix components. We derive particle number concentration in the hydrodynamic size by NTA. And additionally, we get our radius of duration from the mass analysis. And the most obvious um, result we, we observed was a CETA potential drop in the cell culture medium. This can be uh, associated to a, um, adsorption of matrix components to the liposome surface. And this shows that this technique is uh, able for a more comprehensive investigation of interaction of matrix components and analyte in general. To finally um, conclude, we can um, we have seen that the multi-detector approach for FFF is a very powerful tool for the comprehensive physical chemical characterization of nanomaterials in uh, a very complex uh, media. AF4 miles NTA allowed a very fast exosome purification and characterization in one uh, measurement. 
EAF4 mouse and NDA enabled um, the access to size distribution, particle number concentrations, and surface charge. And um, this work was, as I mentioned before, was just accepted in molecules. I would like to thank um, especially Malvern, which were partners in this, um, in this work, and also the whole uh, ACE Nano committee and the European Union for funding and you for listening. Thanks very much.